Hey guys, so in today's video I'll be sharing with you guys how I make my intro for my YouTube channel. So in this video I'm going to be making an updated intro. So the intro that I'm going to be making in this video is going to be the same one that I currently have. It's just going to have a different background and also just a few different tweaks to some elements. But overall it's going to have the same transitions, the same animations and everything and the same music. It just has some different colors and things like that. Just wanted to have a different feel. I just want to make a disclaimer also, I've only been using Final Cut Pro for about 9 months now, so I'm not a professional whatsoever, I don't know all the tips and tricks in Final Cut Pro yet, so if there is something that you see I can do better, maybe let me know in the comments down below, I would appreciate it. But um, So yeah, just take that with you when watching this video, if I do something that you, maybe a professional, would do differently, I'm still a beginner, so just putting that disclaimer out there. But okay, so let's get started with the intro that we're gonna be making in this video. It's really easy. Um, sometimes it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing in Final Cut, but I'll try to explain as best as I can. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be importing all the elements, the background music, the sound effects, everything into my project here. I, as you can see, I have Final Cut open already. I already have a library for it. So I put all the things that I know I'm gonna be using for this intro into a folder on my computer. So I'm just gonna import that real quick and then we'll actually get started with how the steps go. So here you can see all the things that I'm going to be using in this video. We have some images here. We have here a green screen click. I have uh, my previous intro. I'm just going to be using one of the sound effects from that. This is the, sound, the intro that I currently have. You probably saw at the beginning of this video. So again, same sequence. The background is going to be different. So you can see I have this white background here and also the camera and the phone is also going to be a bit different so i just adjusted some of the things with this because it was a pretty sloppy job at the beginning other subscribe button things like that but overall it's going to be the same thing here i just have some swoosh sound effects my background music another sound effect for a mouse click but okay let's actually get started with creating this intro so the first thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be importing my background image so i'm just going to have this plain blackish grayish pixelated kind of background um, and then I'm gonna import my music my background music for my intro okay so here you can see this is the only portion of the song that I'm gonna be using for my intro so I'm just gonna cut this down and just make my timeline bigger so that I can be a bit more precise so this is basically what we're working with so far, my background and my background music. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the first thing that appears in my intro, which is going to be the camera PNG. So if I bring up my old intro here, you can see the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to add in the camera. We're going to have that little video clip playing in the lens of the camera. And then, yeah, we're going to do that. But first, we're going to focus on the camera here. So I'm going to import my camera here that I want to use and nothing is animated yet. And I'm also gonna import an old, old intro that I have that I wanna use for this video. So this was one of my first ever intros that I made. It's very plain and simple, but I do not have this animation anywhere else. So I have to reuse this intro every single time when I wanna do this. So I'm gonna import that old intro over this clip and I'm gonna cut it down to where that animation starts. I'm just going to cut that here and where it ends, uh, there, cut that down. And then I'm going to add a shape mask over this intro because I only want this little circle here that we're going to put in the lens of the camera. So let's search shape mask and let's just refine that. So I don't want any feathering. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a freeze frame for this portion here. So this little area that's still blank, the animation hasn't begun yet. The reason for that is I need that blank piece for the transition of the camera coming in. And then after the camera is actually in, the animation will start, but we don't have enough footage for that. So you'll see what I mean, but I'm just going to go option F. So here is our frames frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a compound clip for my camera and this intro part. So we're just gonna go option G and create a compound clip for that. I'm just gonna quickly 
adjust this so it fits into the lens of the camera. So now you can see it will all take place in the lens of the camera. I'm just gonna make this short because I don't need it to be that long. Um, and then we're gonna import or animate the camera. So how I usually do this is I use the set of titles called Aim Behavior Basics. So how it works is it, each one has its own little animation that it creates. And what I do with that is I import it over everything that I wanted to animate. So everything underneath that title is gonna be animated with the animation that you choose. That's why we created a compound clip, otherwise this background clip would also be affected by that title. So I'm just gonna import the transition that I'm gonna be using and then I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how that looks. So the one I use is called Drop In. I already know because I did test this out beforehand that I want it to be 2.11 like so. So now this is what the in animation looks like and then that will play. So the timing is actually pretty good right now, but now we'll see in, in the full clip. So as you can see, we have our animation here, drops in, and it has placed the animation. Okay, so timing wise, everything is looking pretty good so far. Also what I wanna do though, is I'm gonna add a glitch effect over this first clip. So I like that bad TV effect that you get in Final Cut Pro, so I'm just gonna put that over the first part. So what I'm gonna have it do is I'm gonna have it come in and when it lands, I'm gonna add the bad TV effects. I'm just gonna make a cut here and then just like that, this amount. I'm gonna have the bad TV effect over it. So then it will look like this. Uh, I did voluntarily add a little bit of green over the background. So it gives that more, I don't really know what to call it, retro look, but this is what we're working with so far. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it here because I will now want my iPhone coming in. So again, if we reference my old intro, have a camera and then we have the iPhone coming in with a subscribe button and everything. So let's first import our iPhone here. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. It's only a white now with, uh, I think this is a bit of a darker orange than my previous one. So it goes like this and this is the iPhone that I'm gonna be using. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be importing my subscribe button that I'm gonna be using for the animation. So this is the subscribe button. I just added a little bit of um, bevel and boss in Photoshop just to have it stand out a bit more against the orange. I think I might be making this a bit bigger just so it stands out even more. So this is the subscribe button that I'm gonna be using, but now I have to animate the subscribe button first. So how I'm gonna go about animating the subscribe button is I'm gonna create a compound clip with just the subscribe button. You'll see why in a minute. So this is a compound clip. If I go in here, I'm gonna quickly animate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take it off of the screen here entirely. And then I'm just gonna add a keyframe here at the beginning. So I set my keyframe here and then here about this part of the clip, I want it to be fully at the place that I want it to appear. So I'm gonna have it go maybe here. I think that's a good position. So let me just quickly see what it looks like. So it comes up. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's play that in the main clip. Okay, so that's where my subscribe button comes in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just speed this clip up so that it is a bit faster because it's a bit slow right now. So I'm just gonna do it two times faster. So that looks pretty decent, I think. Yeah, so two times fast is gonna be enough time for it just to come in like that. And so I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. Now, the reason I made that into a compound clip is because I wanted to keyframe it coming up, but now what I wanna do with this compound clip is I'm gonna quickly crop the bottom here so that it looks like the subscribe button comes from the bottom of the phone and not from the bottom of this whole entire clip. So I'm just gonna adjust the crop 
here from the bottom like so it's not gonna make such a huge difference but i prefer it that way so now the subscribe button only comes up from the phone and not from the bottom of the clip okay so now we have that in here okay now i'm gonna add in my mouse click so i actually have a green screen that i'm gonna be using for this so this is just the click green screen that i made for myself that i often use in my videos so i'm just gonna add a marker where it clicks so here that's where it clicks i'm just gonna add the key over it to get rid of the green screen and now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna place it over my subscribe button make it a bit smaller okay so that looks pretty decent so let's play that and now what i'm again gonna do with this clip is i'm gonna adjust the crop so that when it comes in it looks like it's coming in from the phone and not from the clip so again we're going to crop this time we're going to crop from the right and just going to crop it to here so now when it comes in it's coming in from the phone and not from here out of nowhere okay so that's going to be our subscribe button click now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a compound clip of this entire iPhone sequence, but I do wanna uh, make this subscribe button click not happen immediately because I wanna put a transition in between the camera and the iPhone and that means a part of it has to be blank before the subscribe button comes in. So I'm gonna give it this amount of time before the subscribe button comes in just to have enough time for the transition to happen like that. So let's create this a compound clip okay so now let's just quickly add our transition into so the transition that i use for the camera and the iphone is called cube so i'm just going to search that and i'm going to put that in between the two clips okay so that looks pretty good i'm just going to shorten the transition because it is quite long i'm going to make it 0.13 That's enough time. As you can see, the subscribe actually still happens too quickly. So I'm just gonna drag this a bit to the camera side. Yeah, that gives it enough time for the subscribe button animation to come in without having it look too rush. So now with the music, this is what we have so far. Okay, so far that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do, I think the timing is pretty good for the transitions and everything. So when the beat begins, it drops in. Then the transition happens there. I actually want this transition to happen a bit later because it doesn't happen on that beat. I want the transition here to happen on this beat here. So let's see how we can adjust that. I think I'm gonna add a, a freeze frame in here for this bit so that it stays longer before it moves on from the transition. So I'm gonna add a freeze frame right here. So for a longer amount of time, we have that little transition here. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this clip. So now I'm gonna make this a bit longer so the transition happens at this point. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's way better. So as you can see, I just prolonged the amount of time that I have before it stops the transition here, as you can see. So I just prolonged the time that I have there and just moved the transition a bit later. I hope you guys can still be following along and this is not confusing you utterly. I'm gonna cut my iPhone sequence here so I don't need that excess part here. Now for the ending part of my intro, again, referencing my old one, at the end you see we have this little black thing happening here. So this little black circle moving in. So how I get that look is I go to elements here, I go to solids and I just add this custom one here. So I keep it black. I add one to that main clip here, the background and also the iPhone here at the end. And then I add in a transition in between these two clips. So I'm gonna search for that transition. It's called circle. It is a wipe transition. I'm gonna add that in between these two clips. 
So here you can see that, but I changed the transition. So the direction is going to be close for both of these. Close. And also the duration I'm going to make faster. I'm going to make it 0, 0,5. So both of those. So then this is what it looks like. Okay. Now comes probably one of the most important parts, which is actually just adding in sound effects and everything to make everything a bit more dynamic and work together. So the only sound effects that I'm going to be using is two wish transitions and then the mouse click. And then at the end, I put in an iPhone lock sound. So that just helps create a more, re I don't want to say realistic because it's not supposed to be realistic, but add some more elements to it. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wish sound effect for the, eye, the camera dropping in and also here for this transition and then a mouse click over here and then again the lock sound. So just going to paste in this, trans this sound effect. Okay. So this is what it sounds like with the mouse click sound effect. And then again, lastly, we have our iPhone lock sound. So now when I play the intro with just the sound effects, this is what it looks like. That's basically it, very simple, nothing too extravagant. And then we just add in our music here, bring that up to full volume. And then we have our completed intro. And that's that. It's really very simple, actually. Um, I hope you guys could follow along everything that I was actually doing in this tutorial and then you can actually like get some tips here for maybe your own intros and things like that. I'll have a link down below to this um, titles, these and behavior basics. They're really nice for creating animations and everything in your videos. Just remember the key to using these is everything up beneath them are affected. So if I put a title here, this all these clips would be affected. So that's why using compound clips is gonna be your best friend with using those. But I'll put that link in the description if you're interested in using those. So yeah, I hope that helped you guys. I hope you guys got some tips on creating intros for yourself. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other tips you might have or suggestions on Final Cut Pro videos that you would like me to do. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen, click on the playlist to see all of my other Final Cut Pro related videos and click on the video to see my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.